So how does a doctor do robotic surgery? Well, typically a patient is brought into the operating room and positioned and you're put asleep. Once you're asleep, essentially the surgeon and his assistant will make some small incisions on your abdomen and fill your belly up with carbon dioxide gas. What the carbon dioxide gas does, it creates a working space to allow the surgery to be done. Once the working space has been created with the carbon dioxide gas, small little cylindrical tubes are placed into the abdomen that allow the placement of instruments in to the, into the abdominal cavity. Once those instruments have been placed in, a robot is then docked with these cylindrical tubes and one as a surgeon can go over to the console and maneuver these instruments using your hands and feet. Now what's interesting about the robot is the robot is a master-slave type of arrangement. In other words, the master sits at the control panel and he can move his hands in different directions which will control the movements of the instruments within the abdominal cavity. The feet are actually used in robotic surgery for a number of things. If one wants to burn a particular blood vessel with an instrument, what you can do is step on a, a foot pedal that will activate the cautery or bipolar cautery. You can actually move the lens that's placed into the abdominal cavity with your feet. Your hands actually move it, but when you step on a particular pedal, what that does is it can move the lens in and out and control the lens. So a robotic surgeon not only has to be facile with his hands, but he uses his feet during the surgical procedure. Now, a robotic procedure can take, you know, a variable amount of time depending on the experience of the surgeon. There's some surgeons in which it typically takes two, even three hours to do the surgery. Some surgeons can do it in an hour. The surgical time, I don't think, is a good indicator. I think what's important of a patient that's trying to choose a robotic surgeon is to look at the experience. Clearly, the literature suggests the more robotic cases a surgeon has done, probably the better outcomes he will have. Some prostate cancers are high risk, aggressive, and more likely to spread. Others are low risk, least likely to have bad outcomes. The biopsy says cancer, but current diagnostic tools provide limited information about how aggressive a man's individual disease is. So most men decide to treat prostate cancer immediately. Once treated, many men experience serious long-term side effects, like incontinence and sexual impotence. Immediate treatment isn't always needed, but right now a man can't be sure if his cancer is the kind that is likely to require treatment or if he's okay to wait for now. What if there was a test that could determine how aggressive prostate cancer is? Genomic Health is developing a new test to do just that. By reviewing the underlying biology of the tumor and using genes from multiple biologic pathways, the test can predict the aggressiveness of prostate cancer when diagnosed, allowing a man to make a more informed treatment decision with confidence taking care of himself with more information and greater peace of mind.